How do we pursue all our dreams with only 24 hours in a day? How do we learn to love ourselves despite all of our flaws? How do we strive to be better when perfection can't really be attained? Hello, madams! It's your internet at us again, answering your questions and figuring out our own answers as we go along. I am Riza Lana Sebastian. I am Ayin Bernos. And you're listening to the Bootcamp for Grownups in Progress, Camp Confidence. Confidence. everybody and welcome back to the boot camp for grown-ups in progress camp confidence hello mga madam and welcome back to another episode of camp confidence today we will really embody who we are because coming dalawa we have something in common we yep. are both panganays and both. first apos yes we are the first apos of the family in my case I am the first panganay, both sides of the family. So, literally, wala akong ate or kuya na kinalakihan, wala akong finalo. At I grew up being the one followed, which is weird because how do you know how to act, right? Yeah, totoo. So, yun. As legit ates, not just here sa internet, as the protectors of our babies and pinsans. Paano ba tayo nag-thrive? At yan ang pag-uusapan natin today. <gasps> Amazing! A per slay. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so ayun nga. That's the ate connection. Mm-hmm. And we want to talk about what it's like to be in a Filipino family. Because it, I feel like it's such a unique experience. Because yung culture natin is very rich with tradition. But at the same time, it's also very rich in drama. May mga experiences, no? Na pagka ate ka in a Filipino family, ibang experience oh, yun. Oh. Sabi nga nila, when you grow up as an ate in an Asian household, in a Filipino household, no one can hurt you anymore. Yeah, kasi napagdaanan mo na lahat. Ikaw ang una sa lahat. Ikaw ang shield ng lahat. Ang expectation sa'yo, napakataas. And, you know, in some cases, ates are also breadwinners. Mm-hmm. Thankfully, I'm blessed na hindi binigay sa akin ng role na yon. That being said, being an ate has given us, I think, like a different perspective on what it's like to grow up in a Filipino household. So, pag-usapan natin yan, how we deal with reunions, how we deal with comments, how we deal with questions, lahat ng mga katanungan sa amen, like dealing with life. So, simulan natin, madam, sa anong feeling maging ate and does it feel like a privilege? May mga privileges ba tayo as ates? Definitely, there are a lot of perks and privileges as an ate kasi tayo yung laging may bagong something. <laughs> Dahil nga tayo ang bago, tayo ang unang spinoil, sa atin ang mga unang bagong damit, gadgets, etc. Um, and I feel like it's definitely a privilege also kasi Ako kasi, ang hili ko talaga to help other people, to protect other people. And I feel like doon na hone yung character ko na yun dahil ako yung expected na tumulong at ako yung expected na mag-protect. So, it's definitely a privilege in that sense kasi at least I get to do that for my siblings. I get to do that for the family. Naalala ko, madam, as an ate you're expected to do the things that are uncomfortable. Like, for example, growing up, nahihiya akong magtawag ng waiter. Nahihiya ako na humingi ng napkin from the cashier or extra ketchup sa fast food restaurant. Pero parang inisip ko, eh, sino gagawa? Sino pa ba? Sino pa bang gagawa? So, yung mga ganong bagay, to me, it's a privilege looking back because I believe a lot of the things, na, very minor lang siya, pero nag-contribute siya sa extroversion ko, sa drive ko, and how I deal with people. Kasi literally, walang gagawa kung hindi ako. And, Ito. alam mo, madam, for reunions, nakakatawa eh! kasi... <laughs> Ito na, reunions. Mer- meron kaming tinatawag, kami mga kapatid ko. Um, well, my brother coined the term. He called it parang the mano train. What's so, that? Kasi malaki yung family ko, yung sa Batangas reunion namin. So, pagka dumadating kami sa reunion, 
kailangan namin magmano sa mga tita, tito, ganyan-ganyan. E sa sobra laki ng pamilya namin, nung bata kami, hindi namin kilala lahat. So parang, sino magwa- kanino kami magmano? Kanino susunod? So ang oh. gagawin, nasa likod ko sila, tapos susundan nila ako. So okay. magmamano ako, tapos nandun sila sa likod ko, magmamano sila sa lahat ng tao na pagmamanuhan ko. So that's why, pag wala ako, they're like, <laughs> sino? Sino dito? <laughs> sino yung mga tita? Sino yung mga tito? Lahat so, na lang. <laughs> oo. Kaya, tapos parang ako naman, as an ate, wala akong choice. Talagang, I have to figure it out. Like, I have to remember every single one. I have to say hi to people. Na, yun nga, parang... I was born to be this way. <laughs> same, same. Um, especially kapag konware. Um, ako din mga taga pagtanggol din ako eh, ng mga pinsan ko, ng mga kapatid ko. Especially if to na nga napag usapan na natin ng reunions, ang mga unnecessary comments. Hmm. Yan, mga, uy, tumaba ka. Sabi nga, sabi nga nila, kapag sa ibang cultures daw, kapag nagkita-kita kayo, ang unang sasabihin, oh, hi, how are you? How's life been? Pero pag dito daw sa Pilipinas, uy, uy tumaba ka. Nakakainig. Jirits. Diba? Mm-hmm. Ganun talaga dito, uy, tumaba ka. Kailan ka mag-aasawa? Kailan ka mag-aanak? And those questions are, nakaka-pressure siya, mm-hmm. to be honest. Mm-hmm. And... Sana hindi siya norm, but it's the norm. It's the norm. It's the norm, definitely. Pero, ano, dati talaga na-affect ako. Definitely Anong na-affect. Anong mo? Um, it started with yung pag-gain ng weight. Mm-hmm. Eh, kasi genetically, mabilis talaga kaming, alam mo yon tumaba or mag-change ng, ng malaki braso, ganyan. Dati talaga, as in, madam, it really affected my confidence mm-hmm. sa sarili ko. Especially when you get asked about that ng teenager ka, high school, college, na parang alam mo yun, hindi mo pa alam yung footing mo sa buhay, kung sino ka ba talaga as a person, hindi mo pa tanggap, hindi ko nari, um, may, ayun nga, malaki braso, walang puwet, ganon. So, parang I felt like, oh, okay, I need to work harder to have the um, society standards of beauty and body. Kahit Ilang taon lang ako nung 12, 13? My gosh. Diba? Parang akala ng ibang mga matatanda na ng ibang generation na okay lang yon itanong. It's a conversation starter. But it's not. How do you deal with them? I, nung bata ako, definitely naniwala ako sa mga sinasabi nila na ang taba ako, so magda-diet ako, crash diet. But I felt like dun nag-start yung ano, body dysmorphia, ganun. So, um... Naniwala ako. But now na meron na akong footing, alam ko na na genetically malaki talaga ang braso ko. Genetically malaki talaga ang mukha ko. Parang nung mas may confidence na ako, um, tsaka mas, di, di naman sa lalaban tayo, ano. Pero po, we, we respectfully have to tell our elders na mm-hmm. it's not okay, na ano, um, ako, hindi ko naman sila pinapahiya like sa entire yeah. group. I just, I try to set them aside. I pull them from the group na parang, ano, um, I hope this is not disrespectful, but I was really affected with your comment na, ano, hopefully po, wag mo na po tong sabihin sa kanila. Okay lang sa akin kasi at least alam ko na yung sarili ko, but sana wag sa mga mas batang pinsan or mga mas batang kapatid. Ganun. Kasi alam ko yung how... I went through it. And mm-hmm. I don't want anyone to go through that as well. Yeah. So, ayun, communication. It iba siya, no? Like, when you go through it, it's like, okay, I'll take it. But then sometimes, if you see it happening to your younger siblings, <laughs> gusto niyo ng away? Pagka kapatid mo or mga pinsan mo yung inaano nila, Ano kasi nasabi mo? Ano kasi sabi niya, ha? Ha? Sa inyo galing yung jeans namin eh. Kayo <laughs> nagpanganak sa amin eh. Ha? <laughs> Di ba? Parang hello. Another thing is, yung another comment, another comment na I don't want others to receive is yung kailan ka mag-aasawa, kailan ka mag, uh, ano, magkakaanak, ganun. So, kasi what if, especially ako ngayon sa context ng buhay ko ngayon, kami ni Josh, we really decided na ayaw pa talaga namin mag-anak. So, hindi pa talaga kami nagtatry. So, nakwento ko na to sa ibang episode, pero meron kaming kamag-anak. Hindi naman immediate family. Meron kaming kamag-anak na sinasabi na, 
oh, hindi mo fulfill ang uh, mission mo kay Lord kasi hindi ka nag-aanak. Parang, huh? Teka lang. <laughs> May ganun po ba? Please correct me if I'm wrong. Pero yun nga, it's a, it's a decision. It's our mutual decision ni Josh na hindi pa kasi talaga namin kaya sa ngayon. With all of the thing, things that's happening in our life, hindi pa talaga namin kaya. And I hope we don't normalize yung conversations na, oh, mag-anak ka na kasi gusto mo ba na tumanda ka ng walang nag-aalaga sa'yo? That's not the sole purpose. That's not the purpose of having children. Hindi sila security blanket or insurance, insurance. policy. Exactly. Ay. How about sa iyo, madam? Ano yung mga nagtitik ka talaga na comment? You know, my biggest insecurity growing up was getting told, but ka umitim. Because swimmer ako. And when you're a swimmer na outdoor swimming pool, talagang yung tan ko was tanner than tan. As in, tan na tan na tan. Na, alam mo yun, hindi siya like, I went to the beach. Hindi siya ganun. As in, maitim talaga ako. Especially, morena na ako to begin with. Swimmer pa ako. Mm-hmm. So, every time I would go to these reunions, I would get comments like, bakit ang itim mo na? Naglo-lotion ka ba? Or, yung basta yung mga ganong comments. And, this is why, actually, I came up with a t-shirt sa morena the label. I like my tan tita. Because I never knew how to confront that question and tell people na, wag nyo nga akong anuhin, gusto ko naman yung kulay ko eh. Mm. I didn't know how to say that verbally, so I wore the t-shirts. So I would always have those t-shirts. But at the same time, I'm so vocal about liking myself, my body, my, my skin color, to the point na through the years, nag-transition yung mga kamag-anak ko from questioning bakit ang itim mo to finally, uy, ito yung morena girl namin. And it wasn't something that I asked them Hindi ko do. mapigilan yung eye roll ko. <laughs> Hindi na, like dumating sa point na because I'm so vocal about this is something to be proud of. This is something that we need to change. Kahit hindi sila yung kausap ko directly because they see it on the internet, because they see it on my work online, parang napapaisip sila, shocks, ganito pala yung feel ni Ayin. So then, over the years, as I grew up, ngayon, the way that they look at me, they look at me as the morenang pamangkin, our beautiful morenang pamangkin, proud morena, batang genya skin. Alam mo yun? Tapos even my younger cousins who are like, under 10 years old, 12 years old, sometimes their parents would make them talk to me. Like, halimawa, my cousin is feeling insecure about her skin. Kausapin mo si Ate Ayin. Ate Ayin, di ba maganda yung skin niya? Tapos parang ako, I feel so proud na there was a generational shift yeah. na now it's something to take pride of. And it's definitely possible the more you talk about it, wag mo itago yung nararamdaman mo. But at the same time, wag mo rin silang kalabanan. Because that's one thing that I keep reminding myself, that we grew up in different generations. Na if we want impact, if we want change to happen, we need to acknowledge where other people are coming from. And by acknowledging that generational gap, mas bridge yung miscommunication. So ngayon, actually, I'm super proud because as an adult, I feel like mas close ko parents ko, mm-hmm. mas close ko yung mga titas and titos ko na nagkakaintindihan kami. Because hindi na ako dumaan dun sa face na angsty, rebellious, na nga away uh-huh. panganay. Yeah. <laughs> Thankfully, uh-huh. like parang na, nagkaroon kami ng communication in a more mature way. So even things that before hindi kami nag agree with. Like for example, moving out before you're married. Kasi mm-hmm. there was a f- traditional Filipino household. When you move out, kailangan either kasal ka na or like may sarili ka ng pamilya. But I decided to move out kahit wala naman akong anything like that. Mm-hmm. And I moved out dito lang sa Manila. Hindi naman ako nag-abroad. Yun, that's one thing that when I was younger, parang questioned yun na, bakit ka pa lilipat, eh meron naman tayong bahay. Mm-hmm. Meron, andito naman lahat ng kailangan mo. Ba't ka pa lilipat? But, I guess, you know, one thing that really helped me, and this is for everything that you're disagreeing with with your parents, my advice is, act like an adult. Yeah. 
when you talk to them like a responsible adult, they'll recognize you as responsible adults. And yun talaga yung nakatulong sa akin. Because when I was growing up, bawal ako mag-travel, bawal ako l- l- gumala, bawal ako ng mga maraming bagay. But when I started communicating and being honest with my parents na, okay, I'm gonna take this job in Spain, or I'm gonna move here, this is why I'm doing this, this, this. communicate ko properly. And mas maayos yung relationship namin na at the end of the day, nagkakaroon kami ng agreement or maybe we don't agree but wala kaming resentment. Mm-hmm. And to me, that's so important because for them and for me, we want to be able to come home to each other and just be happy. And I think yun yung natutunan ko as an ate na dating strict sila sa akin. Same. Tas, parang you grow out of it. Sometimes, you also have to parent your parents. Yeah. Uh, oh, yes. <laughs> Hi, ma. Hi, pa. Love you. Hello, ma. Love you. Nananad sila na episodes natin lagi, you know? Same sila yeah, din. Updated sila. We love you. Mua hugs. But also, ayun nga. Parang yeah. to those with strict parents, I would say, communicate to them na you are an adult. Lalo na if you're an adult, earning your own money, making your own decisions. Yeah. Then, kasi yeah. usually problem sa Filipino household. Yeah. Tsaka, uh, ano naman, for sure, your parents are coming from a loving place na kaya ka lang nila pinaprevent kasi natatakot lang sila and they will just want to protect you. But if you start reassuring them na, ma, kaya ko to, I'm an adult, ganito ko siya gagawin. Na, ma, magta-travel ako, I have enough money, or ma, I'll uh, go out of my 9-to-5 job and create this business, this is my strategy for that business. Hindi ako magugutom, hindi ako, alam mo yun, they, they just need assurance mm-hmm. na okay lang yung anak nila. And once you communicate that, it will get better. And honestly, ako nga, marami rin mga um, family issues. For sure, may mga, lahat tayo may mga family drama. And alam mo ba, madam, how I communicate? Oh. Kasi, kapag I have so much, I have full of emotions, iiyak lang ako. So, <laughs> alam ko na kapag face-to-face confrontations, wala akong masasabi. What I do is I write letters to my parents. Oo, talaga, sin- sinasabi ko lahat ng mga hinanakit ko, mga ganyan-ganyan. Hanggang And, ngayon? Hanggang ngayon. Wow. Hanggang ngayon. And, ano talaga, talagang kinakausap na nila ako, ganyan. And I'm sure, lahat naman ng mga gusto natin gawin sa buhay, we think na okay for us. And, syempre, yung parents natin, may mga times na we won't meet eye to eye, we won't agree eye to eye, but, ayun nga, Gusto lang nilang malaman na okay ka. Question. Because I also know na parang we're coming from a place of privilege. Because swear yeah, tayo. Yeah, that too. That swear too. tayo sa family natin. So, question is, what can our madams do kung hindi sila okay with their parents? How do people set their boundaries with family? Ang hirap niya. <laughs> Ang hirap ng tanong. Thanks for that question, but that's so difficult. I mean, ano, it's really tama. not easy. It, it, it is not easy. And uh, siguro, what I can share is yung mga stories ng friends ko na lang who's been in that kind of position. Ang na- ginawa nila is syempre, tinry ka usapin, hindi pa rin umoke, wala pa rin naniniwala, blah, blah, blah. And what they did was they tried to move out, set their own boundaries for themselves. Na okay, if ganito ang sinasabi ng buong pamilya ko, I want to build myself better para, alam mo yun, ano talaga eh, you have to have high boundaries for yourself. Especially if yung pamilya and friends mo mismo yung toxic na. So from my end naman, I think... If hindi ka talaga makaset ng boundaries or hindi ka pinapakinggan, it's important to distance yourself. Na parang ikaw na lang yung mag-adjust, at least with your environment. For example, if you're in school, maybe have support system outside of your family. Join orgs para ma-minimize yung time mo at home and your, you know, 
andun ka pa rin sa supportive and nurturing environment. So maybe you'll spend more time in school, pero at least, you know, it might not be ideal, but at least you're getting the support you need. Or for example, if you're already working, maybe make it a goal to move out. Like, kahit na medyo matagal at medyo mahirap and you'll have to save, make it a goal. At least meron kang something to work towards that will help you get through this, especially the toxicity. But like we said, it's hard for us to speak on this topic because... We're one of the lucky ones. So, instead... Dahil dyan... Meron kaming special guest. <laughs> Kasi di namin masagot! <laughs> so, gusto, gusto ko lang tanongin. Um, si Simon. Hi, Dito Simon! Siya. Let's one, all one. welcome Simon! Woohoo! 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 Dito na yan! Dito ka! Oh, transition! Transition! One, two, one, two three! One, two, three! Ting! Okay. Simon, give us your input. Okay. So, how do you deal with parang hindi mo na ma-set yung boundaries mo sa bahay, ganyan. And, kunwari, uh, kailangan mo pang mag-work towards that goal na mag-move out. Well, sa akin ate, importante yung uh, values or yung pagka- uh, kilalanin mo yung sarili mo. Kasi mas mas okay yon na ipagtanggol. Mas okay na ipagtanggol mo yung sarili mo pag kilala mo. Eh. Like, parang, saan ka nang gagaling? Pagkatapos noon, after mong kilalanin, uh, tanggapin mo yung realidad na hindi ikaw yung makakapagpabago sa tao. Pipil- uh, sila yung magiging, sila yung magbabago sa sarili nila. Kasi if i-insist mo yon na parang, ah, pamilya ko to, mababago ko to, um, hindi tayo sure kung kailan yun mangyayari or kung mangyayari man yun. So, para sa akin, values or pagkakilala mo sa sarili mo, para at least hindi ka naliligaw. Or pag pinagtanggol mo yung sarili mo sa pamilya mo, kung sino man, um, may maganda kang rason. Yeah. Like, hindi ka lang parang, asan ba ako nang gagaling? Bakit ayaw ko ng ganitong klasing, klasing trato? Plus, last is yung pagiging tapangan na lang din talaga. Kasi, pamilya yun eh. Like, mm-hmm. hindi, hindi siya... Hindi ganun, mo siya mapipili. Yeah, hindi siya kagaya ng parang romantic relationship. Na, alam mo yun, kasama mo sila nung bata ka. Like, oh. sila nagpalaki sa'yo. Pero kasi... Habang lumalaki ka, mas nagkakaroon ka nga ng values, mas nauunawaan mo yung sistema or yung mundo, yung buhay. So, uh, darating talaga sa point, o may mga point talaga na magkaiba kayo ng... Landas ng, na tatahakin. Or, yes, yung tingin sa realidad. At paniniwala. Yes, at tapang talaga. Kasi kahit naman kilala mo sarili mo and alam mo na yung, yung quote na hindi ikaw yung makakapagbabago sa kanila, if hindi ka pa ganun katapang, like, I mean, hindi naman tayo lahat malakas, pero kailangan natin gawin, hindi mo rin, hindi ka rin makakaalis doon. Mm-hmm. Like, ganun. Tsaka kailangan mong protektahan yung sarili mo, kung ano yung tingin mong sino ka talaga, at ang paniniwala mo sa sarili mo na ganito ako, kahit ano pang sabihin nila, Actually, yes, ang hirap ako. nun. True. <sighs> intense. 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 Ang hinihinig ako. Oo. Iba yan. Hindi na rinig yung vibration ng kamay ko. Ang hinihinig ko. One. Go. Ting! And I'm back, mga madam. Huh. Sobrang insightful nun. Because, alam ko naman talaga malalim yan si Simon eh. Mm-hmm. Kaya ka nga yan ka-work eh. Ganyan, yeah. Pag nata-traffic kami. That's ganyan how we yung, roll. <laughs> ganyan That's... yung pinag-uusapan namin pag nata-traffic kami. Mm-hmm. But, ayun nga. I hope that helps na we have another perspective. So, sa mga other madams with different situations than us, I hope you stay strong and sana, like what Simon said, mas makilala nyo pa yung sarili nyo matanggap rin natin na it's not in our power to change other people. Correct. It's not a you problem, it's a them problem. Slay. Per. So that being said, mga madam, if you guys have stories, tips for our fellow madams who are dealing with these things, let us know in the comments if you're watching on YouTube. If you're on social media naman, tag us at Camp Confidence Radio, at Riza Lana, at Ayin Bernos. And if you guys are listening on Spotify, please don't forget to leave us a five-star review minimum, please. Thank you so much. And sana nakatulong to. And we'll definitely keep you posted for new episodes soon. Thank you guys so much for watching. Bye! Bye.